How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay and today we're talking about the Charles Schwab International Dividend Equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHY. Many of you are familiar with the SCHD ETF, which is another Charles Schwab dividend ETF that focuses on US companies that pay dividends. Well, SCHY is extremely similar to SCHD, except instead of holding US stocks, SCHY focuses on international companies only. So if SCHY is just the global version of SCHD, which many of you know is one of my favorite ETFs on the market, then what's not to love about SCHY? In this video, we'll look at all the important details of SCHY, the similarities and differences between SCHY and SCHD, and of course, whether or not the SCHY ETF is an ETF that you should consider adding to your dividend portfolio. But first, I have to ask you to please hit the like button down below on this video. It's a simple gesture that pays big dividends for both me and this channel. So with that out of the way, and before we really get deep into the details of SCHY, let's first take a quick look at why you might wanna consider international dividends or an international dividend ETF such as SCHY. Obviously the first and foremost reason you might wanna consider international dividends or an international ETF is for diversification. Most investors have what they call a home bias. That means we all tend to favor the stocks of companies from our home country, and as a result, our portfolios end up too heavily weighted towards those companies and towards our home countries. If you're like me and you live in the United States, investing in international companies and ETFs spreads out some of our investing risk to new and different markets, so we're not 100% tied to the ebbs and flows of the US stock market. Another reason to consider international dividends dividends and international companies is that US stocks are at historical highs in terms of valuation. But this isn't necessarily the case in markets around the world. So while we could spend our time scouting the global stock markets for undervalued companies in faraway countries, an ETF such as SCHY makes that process simple and easy. So if you're with me on some of the reasons you might want to hold international companies and international ETFs, then let's start looking at what SCHY is all about. And to start with, let's look into how does SCHY choose the stocks that it holds as part of the ETF. The selection criteria for stocks as part of the SCHY ETF begins with looking at the Dow Jones XUS large cap and mid cap indexes. XUS just means non-US, so companies outside of the United States. Next up, being this is a dividend ETF, SCHY looks for at least 10 consecutive years of dividend payments. Then the fine people at Charles Schwab will take all the stocks that are left at, that meet those two criteria. They'll look at the median dividend yield of that group of stocks and only consider adding companies that have a dividend yield higher than that median of the large group. So now they've narrowed down the big pool of stocks they'll consider adding to the ETF. And they'll take that pool and they'll score those stocks according to a few metrics. They'll look at the company's cash flow compared to the total debt. They'll look at the return on equity of the company. They'll look at the dividend yield of the company, the dividend it pays out. And finally, they look at the five-year dividend growth rate of the company. Those metrics are all equally weighted and from that, they'll calculate a score on each one of those stocks that's left over from our original criteria. After going through all that process, they'll take the top 400 stocks that are left, and those are the ones that are really looked at for possible selection into the ETF. So now that they have those roughly 400 or so stocks, each one of those stocks is analyzed by its three-year price history. They'll look at all the price movement trends over the past three years, and only the stocks that have a three-year volatility less than the median of the pool of 400 will be included in the ETF. And we're not done there because there are a few other rules that Charles Schwab has laid out for the SCHY ETF. And as we saw back when we looked at SCHD, there are a handful of rules put in place that govern the overall composition of the ETF. So the stocks included in SCHY are added and weighted based on their market cap. So larger companies get a larger share. And just the same as SCHD, SCHY says no one company can make up more than 4% of the overall ETF. So they don't want one company becoming too large of a holding of the ETF and everything relying too much on one or two companies. Next up, REITs are not included in SCHY. 
and any sector is limited to a 15% overall weighting. Just like that cap on any one company being 4%, they don't want any one sector being too heavily weighted in the ETF. So by keeping it more diversified across several sectors, you don't run into that risk if something goes bad in just one of them. Now the final two rules for the composition of SCHY are different than SCHD. And the first one of those is stocks that are from countries considered emerging markets are capped at 15%. Emerging markets are generally smaller economies, smaller countries. So if you think of developed markets like the US or the UK or you know most of Europe as your blue chip stocks, your Johnson & Johnson's, your Coca-Cola's, your Pepsi's, think of emerging markets like your meme stocks. Your, your GameStops, your AMCs, whatever. All of that was just a roundabout way to explain why emerging markets are capped at 15% of the ETF. And finally, the rebalancing of SCHY occurs quarterly. That's a slight deviation from SCHD where they only rebalanced annually. Now with all the nuts and bolts of how SCHY actually works out of the way, let's get into what SCHY holds and let's look at the top 10 stocks included in the SCHY ETF. And these top 10 stocks in the SCHY ETF make up just over 38% of the total holdings. The top holding being Unilever, followed closely behind by Sanofi, GlaxoSmithKline, and Roche Holding Limited. Rounding out the top 10, we have British American Tobacco, Deutsche Post, BHP Group, Anil, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, Toronto Dominion Bank, or TD Bank as you're probably more familiar with it, and KDDI Corporation. Each one of those top 10 is pretty evenly weighted at about three and a half to 4% overall. If we move on and look at how SCHY is weighted between the countries around the world that it pulls its stocks from, you can see just over 17% of the stocks in the ETF come from the United Kingdom. The company with the second most stocks included is Japan with about 12.5%, followed just behind by Switzerland, Australia, and Germany. So when you invest in SCHY, you really are exposing yourself to just about all of the world's economies outside of the United States. So whether it be the individual companies, the countries that those companies come from, or the sectors those companies come from, SCHY does a good job at spreading risk out and keeping itself diversified. Okay, that's all great information, but how does SCHY perform? And that's where things start to get a little murky here. You see, SCHY is a very new ETF. This only launched in April of 2021. So we don't really have any good data on how this is gonna perform over any sort of long time frame. But Charles Schwab did do a lot of back testing on this strategy. So in the fund documents, they do give us historical returns for the strategy. And according to Schwab, over the last 10 years, it would have returned about 8.7%, which goes up to 11.9% over the last five years. And if we just look at the past year, SCHY would have returned 31.7%. And when we compare SCHY versus SCHD over those same time frames, SCHD does outperform over every single one. SCHD returned about 15% over 10 years, 16.9% over the last five, and 44.1% over the last year. Those kind of numbers can be expected just because over the past decade or two, because the US stock market has been red hot compared to any other market around the world. But that's kind of the point of the diversification aspect of holding something like SCHY. Over the past 10 or 15 years, it may severely lag the US stocks and SCHD, but over the next 15 years or 20 years, Maybe it's the international markets that get red, red hot and the US market kind of stagnates or flounders a little bit. Outside of how an ETF operates and its performance and what it holds, one of the most important things I always look at when considering an ETF to add to my portfolio is what kind of expense ratio does it carry? So what are the fees of the SCHY ETF? And if you've looked into any number of ETFs before, you're probably pretty aware Internationally focused ETFs, ETFs that focus outside the United States, usually carry higher expense ratios than those that invest domestically. And yes, that is the case with the SCHY expense ratio. But I am glad to say the SCHY expense ratio is still only 0.14%. 
which is extremely low for any kind of ETF we're talking about. There's one really important thing I haven't even mentioned yet, and that's the dividend yield. You figure I'm sitting here talking about a dividend ETF, it's probably a good idea to bring up the dividend yield. And that's another area where things get a little hazy with SCHY. Because it launched in April of 2021, it's still pretty brand new as I sit here and film this, we don't have any good data on what the dividend payouts look like. It did pay out a small dividend in quarter two of 2021, and currently the dividend yield for SCHY is listed at 4.05%. So is SCHY a buy? Why or why not? And I think there's a couple reasons it could be a good buy and a couple reasons why you might want to second guess adding this to your portfolio. SCHY generally has the same stringent criteria for picking its holdings that SCHD does. And SCHD is one of the best performing dividend ETFs on the market. So I can feel pretty good that SCHY will perform well and will be a really good holding. Next up, it's got a low expense ratio. So it doesn't cost us a lot of money to be holding this ETF. And as we saw, SCHY is well diversified across companies, across sectors, and across nations. A few of the things that might give me pause before investing in SCHY right now are most international markets have really lagged the US stock market for a long time now probably the better part of 20 years or more. And while yes, that could turn around and flip at any moment, I think most people would expect that trend to continue for the foreseeable future. So by investing in SCHY, you might be giving up a little bit of performance in the name of diversification. The next somewhat cause for concern is the way a lot of international companies pay dividends. If you're here in the United States, you're probably more than familiar with really steady payouts they declare a dividend at the beginning of the year and you get that each quarter or each month. And if all goes well, that company will continually and steadily increase that dividend as the years go by. With companies outside of the US, that's not always the case because outside of the US, they treat dividends a little differently than we do here. So dividend payments can be a lot more erratic. You can't necessarily count on getting the same amount quarter to quarter or year to year. And the final thing that may make us pump the brakes a little bit on investing in SCH why is its lack of history. We don't have a lot of performance data or dividend data on this yet. We don't know what the liquidity is like. If a lot of people don't invest in SCHY and you buy shares, it could be very hard to sell them when you want to. Although coming from a company like Charles Schwab, I wouldn't be too worried about that. But with something so new, you do kind of have to pause and take a look at that sort of thing. Overall though, even though it's still early on in its history, I think SCHY looks very promising based on Schwab's history and its history with the SCHD ETF. If you're looking to get some dividends outside of the United States, I think SCHY is worth a deep, close look and possible addition to your portfolio. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you found any of this useful. If you want to see more deep dives like this into other ETFs, check out these videos right over here. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one.